So, in this recording, I'll be talking about... Hold on, I'm gonna move my mic. You can hear some sound, I apologize about that. But in this video, I'll be talking about the Star Gen Scratch and it being introduced in North America, and me giving some factual things because, uh... Well, some of you guys may not know, because if you're playing on North America PS2 right now, and you're playing in 2020, you don't know some of those shit that happened in the past. And I do have some footage and some history behind it, and me just stating some things here and there. So, when it comes to this video, there will be a time skip in the description if you want to hear my overall opinion. I'm going to have to give a disclaimer because I'm going to be cursing, I'm going to be shouting, and there's going to be some background noise every time I might hit my mic or move around. So, just a heads up about that. Let me talk about the factual stuff though. So when it comes to PS2, understand that back then they introduced the Star Gens in Episode 4. This video is in what? This video was made in October 9th, 2016. And yeah, this is Stargens right there. Now, Stargens were being introduced with a bunch of other functions as well, like mining and fishing, new type system, new type grinding, new type weapons, layered outfits, and then the Stargen Scratch as well. So the thing about the Star Gems is that back then, you didn't need to use your Star Gems on a lot of functions. The things that you might need to use them now, for example, the material storage and stuff, it wasn't a thing back then in 2016. This is an old video of mine that I was working on. I will most likely redo it in due time. But the thing is, this is just to display some of the stuff back then. So when it comes to you using your star gems, you can use it on your mining and fishing. However, a lot of people ignore that because there were alternate ways, another way to farm for a lot of the stuff you need for mining and fishing with a bunch of your characters or using a bunch of stamina. The other method was using your star gems for collection files to reset it and get, um, get, it, get it again. However, a lot of people ignore that because they would rather save their Star Gems for what was to come, aka the Star Gem Scratch. So they didn't do that. Now, you might want to do it because of various factors, like this quest is going to disappear in a few days, or the collection file is going to disappear in a few days, and you still need a plus 35 your weapon. Understandable. And note that you can see that we only have 5 collection file slots back then. Now you can go up to 7. And let me go back to the storage system. Yes, we did not have a material storage. There was an extra storage one. However, when it comes to extra storage one, you needed to buy it with ACs, not with star gems. They changed this, I don't know, at the end of episode 4 or throughout episode 5. But somewhere around there, they decided to add that material storage and make extra storage. Like, you can buy that extra storage with star gems. So, the thing is, when it comes to the star gems, or the... Yeah, the Star Gems, the first one that was introduced into Japanese PS2. Let me see if I can find the right tab. It's over here. It's over here. First Star Gem that was ever introduced, I will have the links in the description, is this one over here. This started on June 15, 2016. This is the Darkness Ruler. And when it comes to this scratch, you can see that there's not a lot of items here. Yes, yeah, a bunch of miscellaneous stuff down here, but then you got most of the stuff that you need to make an elder, a persona, and then apprentice. Now, you don't, you won't be able to get the same hair that uh, Finn's sister has, but, you know, basic stuff right there. Compared to the one that is being released over there in North America, once again, website in the description. But you can see there's a lot more items, and this is the updated one that they kind of released recently, I don't remember, episode 5, episode 6, but yeah, that's not the first one we ever have. They combined it with various other things, and with these old versions of the Star Gems as well, you don't see those emotes. I'm not going to try to go through all these, uh, what is it, these catalog things just to find this particular one. But yeah, it's just that you guys got a lot of options, a lot of things, and this is going to cost Star Gems. Now, let me point something out. So when it comes to the current Star Gen that is going on in the Japanese PSO2, this is just one of the two. This one started out on December 11, 2019. Guess what date it expires? Get to pull it up over here. When it comes to that particular Star Gen scratch, you can see that the expiration for this is going to be August 12, 2020. That is a long time frame right there. That's 8 to 9 months. That's 8 to 9 months where you can try to collect a bunch of Star Gems so you can get the stuff in here. Obviously, there is a frequency bonus as well, but I don't think they have a, a select. They give you something else, which is a weapon camo. So yeah, it's going to take you a while to accumulate a bunch of Star Gems so you can actually get you 
so you can actually get stuff from start to scratch, but that's fine in the Japanese PSO2. The problem with North American PSO2 is not the start to scratch. That was always the thing. That was bound to happen because that was the thing in Japanese PSO2. The problem was what North America decided to implement. Which is like several goddamn features where it uses up a bunch of star gems and then the other problem is you you getting star gems. Now there is a way to get a bunch of star gems, especially if you are new to the game and you're doing a bunch of titles and arcs missions. Those are one time things though. It's not like every new character that you make on the account will be able to stack up on those star gems. If it was a thing then star gems wouldn't have been an issue and a lot of people will have a lot of star gems. But no, once you collect a certain title, let's say if I want to collect this title that says Colorful Friends right here, it is going to reward me 20 star gems, but that's it. I can't get this title again unless I make a new account. But even then, if you make a new account, guess what? You can't really move the star gems from account to account. When it comes to the Japanese PS2, as the years progress with this function available to us, they also added more ways for us to get star gems on a regular basis. For example, Idola. Idola is a phone hack game that they introduced like during the six year. Can't remember when they introduced Idola, but that's a phone hack game that you can link to your PS2 account. You do that, you can get these Idola points. You can use your Idola points in these in the Idola shop. And then you can buy these items over here. I'm saving up my Idola points so I can get this uh, stupid lobby action. But you can use your Idola points as well to get star gems. This is 100 star gems. That might not sound a lot, but this is on a weekly basis. Within 4 weeks, you can get 400 star gems right there. There's two other areas that I know of and I'm still looking around that you can get a bunch of uh, star gems for on a weekly basis. The other method you would want to do when it comes to you farming for star gems in game is to actually buy outfits that have the star gem tag on them or they still have star gems on them. If you are selling these outfits with star gems, I don't care if you're playing on the Japanese or the North American PS2, I will have to give a shout out to you, you guys, call you guys MVPs, call you guys the OGs, because guess what, you're helping those who don't really want to spend a bunch of real life money to get star gems. You are giving him that access, that star gem right there. Even though it's like, I think it's just 10 star gems? Do I have a star gem on me? Nope. I think it's just 10 star gems per outfit, but still, that's a lot. And if you accumulate that star gem or you build up those star gems, you can get to 100 and whatnot. So yeah, big shout out to those who are selling outfits with star gems. They're not doing it on accident. They're doing it on purpose because of the fact that there are players who can't afford to get star gems or they don't want to spend money to get star gems. You're giving that option so they can buy it off of you. But yeah, this still leads up to me pointing at NA and say you guys did... Well, I'm not pointing to you guys as in the players. I'm pointing to whoever is running the goddamn game. I don't know who is running the goddamn game. I understand that Microsoft is kind of backing it, but then there's also Sega quote unquote localizing it but at the same time I don't think it's Sega's fault I'm not gonna discredit them 100% mind you I don't know what's going on behind the scenes but someone is to fucking blame and North American PS2 they did a bunch of shit that I'm already jealous of in a sense but also that I was aware of and I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out why they didn't do some of the things that I hoped they were gonna do but no they did it Here's the thing, if you get to introduce something that's going to use a bunch of fucking currencies, you might as well have a way for people to farm that shit. Um, guess what? There's no fucking way for most people in NA to farm a consistent amount of star gems. Yes, once again, titles, arcs missions, the outfits, but y you have to do it in a way where it's not like a shit ton. When it comes to Japanese PS2, once again, there's multiple ways to get a consistent source of star gems while also doing those means that you guys are doing. So they're getting a bit more than what you guys in North America are doing. And my question is this, if you guys, if an NA tampered with so many functions in game, they took out so many things in game like O-type grinding, O-type weapons in general, O-type crafting, and they also took out some other little snippets like Ziggs flying orders and crap, why didn't they change? The fucking functions or the the exchange over there in the casino coins to at least give you guys star gems because guess what you guys got the battle pass first and the fucking fresh shop why didn't it give you guys ways to get consistent source of 
Star gems. Hmm. Hmm. Now, this video is going to be unedited. I'm trying to remember what the fuck I wanted to say. I didn't write a script for this just because I know I'm going to go on a huge fucking tangent in a bit and I'm going to get emotional. The thing is, yeah, North America PS2 already added a lot of changes, implements into the game. Guess what? The Arx missions? That's an episode 5, episode 6 thing. That was not an episode quote unquote 1, 2, 3 thing. Old type weapons, old type grinding was a thing back then in episode 1, 2, 3. Guess what? You guys never even touch a fucking old type weapon over there in North America PS2. You guys got a new type. You never toyed around with the pain that a lot of old players have to do. When it comes to drop rates as well, there were a shit ton of drop rates, a low fucking drop rate for certain weapon types. For example, 12 stars. They were fucking low to the point where a 13 star was better and easier to get than a fucking 12 star weapon. There were so many changes and implements that NA decided to do, which overall is good. I didn't bitch about it because, one, it was good. But the problem I had was the system and them trying to milk as much money. Once again, I'm not going to fucking point fingers at stuff. But it was an obvious thing the moment I got in there and I was staring at the this stupid battle pass. Because obviously, this, not, this is not a fucking thing over here in the Japanese PSO2. Do you see an option for a stupid battle pass in here? I don't see any. And along with the stupid fresh shop. There is something called a treasure shop, which you can't spend your star gems in. But guess what? This doesn't have anything to wonderful that you would want to get doesn't have a fucking outfit in here there might be an accessory outfit or even a lobby action that you might want to get but it's not going to be like several items in here it's just going to be with this one item it might cost like 880 the one lobby action that was in there for 880 star gems is this one that i'm going to spam right now or use right now it's just you taking pictures on a selfie stick and it was accessible to everyone through that treasure shop for 880 star gems, yeah, that's a lot, but still, once again, Japanese PS2 has a consistent way to get that. Why did North America implement that bullshit? Why did they have a fresh shop instead of a fucking treasure shop NPC? That fresh shop, I call bullshit on too, because of the outfits that you don't... Like, the outfits originally did not need to be used. Like, you didn't need to buy those fucking outfits with star gems, that's what I'm trying to say. You had to use ACs, sure, and you get them from doing the AC scratch... But at the same time, you can then put those outfits into the fucking player shop. If you want to inform my ignorant ass about the battle pass function, how it works exactly, along with the fresh shop, go ahead and do so. But I don't know if that outfit from the fresh shop can be even placed in the player market. If it is, then I guess that's a pro and con. But the biggest issue I have is like the battle pass because... Yes, I understand that they're trying to speed up the cosmetic shit and all these other things, and yes, it gives you incentive to farm the game and stuff, but at the same time, this is eating up 200 fucking star gems, so you can go down a certain path. Yes, you can do the battle pass for free without spending the 200 star gems, but there are some free items, literal free items that are from a fun scratch that was in the Japanese PS2, suck at that stupid battle pass. Once again, if you want to inform my sorry ass about the function of this thing, go ahead and do it in the comments, but when it comes to a battle pass, it has a certain time limit. It has a time limit, right? And once it's done, once it's like a new season and a new battle pass comes out, yeah, you can go back to it, but will it reset it? Well, you need to spend 200 SGs so you can get back into it. And it's... it's ugh. And it's dumb. Like, if, if you're wondering what the free item I'm going to talk about is, it's this wire ponytail over here. This is a fun scratch item. Guess what they did with this one fun scratch item? They put this fucker into the battle pass that costs 200 star gems so you so you can go down that stupid cosmetic route this is one of my old hairstyles that i got in game this is like the first female hairstyle i went and it didn't cost me as much because it was a fun item i rocked that thing throughout my entire gameplay of japanese pso2 i still use it every now and then still but yeah that thing isn't even a fucking free to play item over there it's like a star gem fucking item Yes, you can spend your free star gems that you get from your titles and stuff, but now you got the star gem scratch, which you would want to spend your star gems on because it has very specific items that are character lock. Guess what my character is using right now? Ignoring the goddamn out of wear. Her hairstyle, her hair specifically, and her outfit. Those are from the star gem scratch. And this is account locked. Yeah. You don't see a lot of people in Japanese PSO2 running around with this hairstyle or 
Well, this outfit, questionable, but... Yeah, the thing is, this this thing is unique, which is good and bad in its own right. Yes, it's untradeable. Yes, you can't put it onto the market. That's gonna piss off some people, but at the same time, it's unique because, guess what? Not a lot of people are running around with it. That's good. But ultimately, the, the thing about Sergeant Scratch is that I have no quarries with it. This was a function that was meant to be a thing in... Japanese Pizza 2. It was supposed to be a thing over there in North America Pizza 2 as, as well, but guess what? With North America Pizza 2, it did not correct the bullshit ways to get fucking Star Gems, and it didn't correct some of the basic shit. They added some crap. We don't, once again, Japanese Pizza 2 does not have a fucking Battle Pass or a Fresh Shop. Why did they add a Battle Pass and Fresh Shop? Don't, don't answer that damn question, I know why. Now the question I ultimately have is this. Who the fuck ordered this? Who the hell decided to say, like, yeah, North America should have, like, this battle pass in here, along with the fucking Fresh Shop. And if you're gonna tell me it was Sega's idea, I highly doubt it, because if they wanted us to suffer and they want to milk as much money as they can, they would have implemented this bullshit back in 2016, when they were introducing the Sergeant Scratch. They would have forced the players to go through the bucket fucking battle pass and spend another extra 200 Sergeants for this shit. So, uh, yeah, my overall opinion about this, I have no quarries with it in the Japanese PS2. If you're playing on North American PS2 and you're dealing with this crap, I apologize and I, you have my regards and sympathies. This is why I'm not playing as much on North America, because it's not the game itself that I'm pissed off about. I'm glad that they're promoting the game. I'm glad there's a Western version now for those who are, have been dying to play it. The thing I am pissed off about is how... The, the company, or whoever is the head honcho, is changing the fucking game from its original content. And they're, they're, they're trying to get as much money. I'm, I'm not going to try to soft boil it and shit. And obviously, this is going to be a thing in most video games. Yes, I understand that. But still, it's like... Japanese Fusa 2 does not need to resort to a fucking battle pass. I'm already tossing fucking money at it. They have a fucking pity system too when it comes to this... Scratch system now with the revival one, which I'm gonna make a separate video talking about that shit. That, that's a different story. There is no pity system, but with this thing, for example, you spend an X amount of money, you do a bunch of scratches, you get this select ticket. This select ticket is like your pity system right here. This is the same thing with like most other video games, gotcha games in particular. Yeah, I'm 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 just baffled to how people aren't aware of this and they can't get over it i knew that this was going to be, be a thing i bet some other players that have played japanese ps2 they played it for a long time and they decided to move over to north america or are playing both games they knew that this was going to be a thing i'm gonna have to emphasize on this this game is eight years old eight fucking years old don't be ignorant and don't say like, oh yeah, this is a new game in North America. Yeah, it is a fucking new game in North America. But the game itself, PSO2 itself, it's been eight years. Eight fucking years. It's going through an eight year anniversary right now. This is nothing new. Anything that's happening in the Japanese PSO2 is bound to happen over there in North America. So if you are thinking it's a new game, get that out of the gutter. This is not a new game. It's new over there in North America, but in terms of its actual longevity and its actual game, it is fucking long. It's eight years. So you gotta consider some of the shit that's gonna happen over in NA because this is a thing over there in Japan. If you don't want to know about it, then that's entirely up to you. But don't pretend like it's not a thing. Japan, the Japanese version of PS2 has been a thing. It has been a thing for eight years and i'm saying thing because i don't know what else to fucking label it as yeah i can label it as a game but there's so many things that branched off from fucking pso2 and i still got a lot of praise for this dang game but at the same time there's some things that is making me question like some other crap like the stuff that's gonna happen in japanese pso2 is not gonna offend me more than what's gonna happen over there in north america because once again they're I'll shut up now. That's it for this video. If you want to like, dislike, go do whatever. If you want to talk to me, comment down below. Fuck, do just do whatever. I'm done with this video. I've been doing a bunch of recordings for this because this has been irritating the living hell out of me. And i just been saying a bunch of shit sometimes when I got into the emotional part. I'm done. That's it. This is fucking 20 minutes too. I might have repeated my sorry ass. I apologize for that. I'm out. Goodbye. I'm going to go on a fucking run. I'm going to go melt into fucking sun. See you guys next time. Peace.